very good morning and a hearty welcome to all of you on the occasion of inauguration of radiotherapy facilities at walawalkar hospital our honorable guests have already inaugurated the radiotherapy facilities at the hospital and now we are going to do it in a symbolic way in a, a ceremony in a way by lighting the lamp i now welcome our honorable guests i thank the honorable guests occasion of opening of the radiotherapy facilities at our hospital the radiotherapy facility includes bhabhatron 2 radiotherapy unit nucleotron hdr brachytherapy unit siemens ct simulator top of the line treatment planning system and dosimetry equipment and above all the medical and technical backup of the radiation oncology department of tata memorial hospital let us now begin our program in traditional way by lighting the lamp i request the dignitaries on the dais to come forward for the deepa prajwalan our sanskrit language says tamasoma jyotirgamaya literally translated as let us leave the darkness behind and go to the light when the lamp is lit it is believed that the neg negative emotions are slowly burn out the flame of the lamp I now request Shri Vikas Walavalkar, the managing trustee of our institute, to please give a welcome address. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of myself and all my colleagues at Walavalkar Hospital, I extend a warm welcome to the honourable chief guest, Dr. Anil Kakodkar, Dr. Rajan Badwe, Shri Ambu Mani Ji, Dr. Shiva Astawa, Dr. Surendra Shastri, Dr. Ganesh. and to all other doctors and staff members from tata memorial center before i say anything about today's event i would like to personally and also on behalf of the our institutions heartily congratulate dr anil kakodkar for being honored as padma vibhushan by the president of india sir we are very much delighted by your brilliant and memorable achievement in your exemplary career we are aware of the efforts you have made in getting the nuclear power agreement executed in the interest of the nation and we salute you for getting this honor which you richly deserved as for today's event of starting radiotherapy radiotherapy facility at our hospital i must admit we at walawalkar hospital feel honored on this occasion today is a memorable day for our hospital in 2003 we had entered into collaboration with tata memorial center for rural outreach program it was the first step towards providing free cancer treatment to the people of this area however because of lack of radiotherapy facilities we could only administer chemotherapy and perform surgeries and for radiotherapy we had to refer the patients to tata memorial center at mumbai with the setting up of radiotherapy facility at our hospital this shortfall has been done away with and now the patients will get comprehensive cancer treatment at derwan without any need of going all the way to mumbai of course this will be possible only with the active support from tata memorial center we are aware that this has been made possible because of the keen interest taken in this project by honorable dr anil kakodkar and dr dinsha and we are extremely grateful to both of them 
Valavalkar Hospital is run by a trust which was established by Sri Sadguru Digambar Das Maharaj, whom we revere as a saint. The trust was established not only to run charitable activities in social, educational and medical fields, but also to teach the individuals age-old eternal human values and also to create a band of selfless workers dedicated to the service of humanity. As all of you know, today the whole world, of course with some honorable exceptions, is running after materialistic gains and pleasures, forgetting that they are only illusory and not everlasting. What is eternal in this universe are the basic human values, which, from the time immemorial, our holy religious books and our saints have been teaching us. Unfortunately, the paramount importance of these basic human values has not been realized. The result is that the people have no respect for each other. On the contrary, the hatred against each other is spreading very fast in the world on the basis of religion, language, caste, skin of color, etc. There are many religious faiths in the world and everybody has a right to live according to his own religious faith. The ultimate aim of all religious faiths is self-realization, which alone gives everlasting happiness to human beings and strengthens their faith in spiritualism. Sri Bhagavan Sri Krishna, while preaching Gita to Arjuna on the battlefield, had emphasized on Karma Yoga for attainment of self-realization, that is doing one's duty without expecting any returns from out of that karma. And it's necessary that his karma yoga should not only be preached, but also be practiced. Sve sve karmanya bhiratas sau siddhi labate naraha, sva karma niratas siddhim yatha vindati tachrunu. That is, one who is engaged in doing one's duty in a proper manner, attains one's goal. Such a man becomes entitled to moksha, that is, he is freed from the cycle of births and deaths. This karma yoga should be followed by everyone in this world to achieve eternal satisfaction, good living and ultimate self-realization. In order to achieve this goal, everyone in the society should necessarily develop purity in his thoughts as well as in his deeds. He should also gain pure knowledge and perform his duty properly without, without expecting any returns. If this is followed faithfully by every person in the society, then that day is not far off when the whole society and the entire mankind has become rich in good thoughts, good deeds, pure knowledge and full of human values. In order to teach these virtues and values to every individual, a band of selfless workers entirely dedicated to the service of humanity is absolutely essential. To produce such workers for rendering selfless services to the public at large, Sri Sadguru Digambar Das Maharaj, who had intuition and deep insight, established this charitable trust. He always used to tell us that if we fail to extend our helping hand to such helpless persons who do not get enough food to eat, pure water to drink, shelter to live, enough clothes to wear, proper education and proper medical help in disregard to their religion or caste, then one day the entire human population would extinct. These basic necessities are in fact the prerequisites for understanding the human values and self-realization because the spiritual philosophies cannot be taught to a person who is on empty stomach. Bhagavan Vyas Maharshi states, Ashanam Vasanam Vasa Yesham Chaiva Vyavasthitam Magadena Samakashi Ganga Pyangara Vahimi which means that for one who does not get adequate food, clothing and shelter, for him sacred place like Kashi and a place with anarchy like Magadha are alike. Similarly, pure water of river Ganga would be like burning embers to him. In short, he would not be in a position to understand the spiritual teachings, human values, etc., unless his basic needs are satisfied. And providing these basic necessities of life is a must for spiritual, intellectual, or material well-being. With this aim in mind, our trust has undertaken the work of providing these necessities to the weaker section of our society under the guidance of Sri Digambar Das Maharaj. The work of this trust was the determination of Sadguru Digambar Das Maharaj and as you know, the determination of any saint is nothing but the achievement, it, achievement itself. In Marathi we say, Santan se sankalpa hit siddhi aste. A small plant of this trust which was set in this ground by Sadguru Digambar Das Maharaj about 40 years ago has now grown and blossomed into a big full-fledged tree. This hospital, which is constructed under the guidance of Sri Ashok Joshi alias Sri Kaka Maharaj, 
the holy successor of Sadguru Digambar Das Maharaj, has proved to be a life-saving institution for the people of this Kokan area, as well as a spirit and guide for all the dedicated workers like us. Today is the most memorable and important milestone in the long path to go for our hospital, but we are sure that with the blessings of saints and spiritual backing, our hospital would certainly march forward with confidence and do remarkable things of which everybody would be proud of in the years to come. In today's function, the grant which our hospital has received through the active support of Dr. Anil Kakodkar and Dr. Dinshaw has played a major role. We know that the said grant has placed on us a great moral responsibility and therefore I give an unequivocal assurance to Dr. Kakodkar that we would definitely make total use of the radiotherapy facility emerge from this grant for giving highest possible treatment to the patients at the lowest possible cost to them. I extend my sincere thanks to Honorable Dr. Kakodkar and also to other personalities, namely Dr. Dinshaw, Dr. Rajan Badwe, Sri Ambu Maniji, Dr. Srivastava, Dr. Deshpande, Dr. Shastri, Dr. Sharmila, Dr. Shripad Banavli, and all other doctors and staff members of Tata Memorial Center for extending all the cooperation and help to make this occasion a great success. Thank you. May I now request Mr. Valavalkar to felicitate our honorable guest, Dr. Anil Kakodkar, Chairman Atomic Energy Commission and Secretary to the Department of Atomic Energy, Government of India. Valavalkar to felicitate Dr. Rajan Badwe, Director, Tata Memorial Center. I now request Dr. Suvarna Patil to give brief introduction of the hospital. Swami Samartha, India is an amazing nation where every 100-200 kilometers language, culture, cloth, food, clothing, socio-economic level, everything changes. But surprisingly, even the healthcare delivery services also change. It is a fact that medical facilities in rural Kokan were nascent before the hospital came into existence. It would not be an exaggeration if I say that disease was physiological to them. To bridge this difference, the trust began its social upliftment activities prior to the hospital came into reality. The idea was to deliver services at places where they were not available. Though the hospital came into existence in the year 1996, it was in the minds of trustees for several years. Developing such a hospital in the region wasn't easy. How to start and appoint doctors was a challenge apart from local resistance. Therefore, a decision to start a diagnostic center and a CT scan unit was taken with the idea to give population the services which were not existent before. This worked and next an ICU was started. Again, it was based on the ideology of giving what has never been received. Patients would come in critical situation and this led to the addition of hemodialysis unit, echocardiography unit, pacemaker, etc. Patients would still come in critical condition only. OPDs used to be barren and therefore we started several health camps and awareness programs. This was how gradually we upgraded the services in the hospital and the community participation also increased. Today, the hospital has grown to this magnitude with several features like multi-speciality setup, modern medical health care, health services provided at native places in rural area at heavily subsidized rates. It is a clean, disciplined and fully computerized organization in which the local people work. Yes, amongst the local population who had some basic education were given diploma, nursing courses, computer education and hospital is run by the local population only. Students professionally trained in this institute make every effort to match up to the ISO certificate standards and they work more hard to upgrade their skills. 
Its location is no longer a handicap as it is well connected to the outside world by internet and ISRO satellite. Super speciality visiting consultants come every Saturday Sunday and specialist faculty is in the campus for 24 hours taking care of all the emergency routine and speciality treatments. Therefore, the institute works at par with any modern health institute in any metropolitan, even though located in Nirvan. Trust always believe that even the poorest of the poor have a right to good health. They should always have an access to the existing modern health services. We are all working towards the same goal. Today we have Honorable Dr. Anil Kakodkar, Dr. Rajan Badwe and our own England team at Derwan for the same cause which was visualized by the Gambardas Maharaj, that is health for poor at their doorsteps. Unique example of this is our model cancer control program. Yes, Tata Memorial Hospital has made difference in the lives of the people in rural Kokan. She was a 35 years old lady from Gave village, Dapoli Taluka who had a potential oral lesion screened in the first outreach camp held by Tata Memorial Hospital Rural Outreach Center and told to have a biopsy to rule out malignancy. The word cancer for this population is synonymous to death. With four small children, extreme poverty, alcoholic husband and loads of responsibility, she looked confused, surprised and frightened. She was brought to Derwin where surgery was done and chemotherapy started. Now for last five years, she is leading a healthy life. Thanks to Dr. Shastri for selecting Walawalkar Hospital as an outreach center and giving us an opportunity to serve these people. This project has not only helped people who would be dying of cancer without knowing that they have lost their lives because of cancer, but also has turned the hopes of survival and face of technology towards the rural Kokni people. The challenges that our field staff faces is not only surprising but sad that just in a matter of 200 kilometers from Mumbai, ignorance is prevalent and thriving to this extent that they say whatever life we have or whichever way we live is decided by God and if he wishes to kill us, we will accept it. Participation in breast and cervical malignancy screening faced not only dismal participation but also verbal and violent protest. Things are changing now and the initial hiccups, the program has managed to spread the news of survival. They can now appreciate the importance of early detection and the concept of screening. Moreover, this treatment which has never in their reach has reached their doorsteps. It is given free of cost now at Derwan with the technical knowledge skill base and for such patients 24 hours doctors help help from TMH as well as specialists from Mumbai Pune is available through telemedicine and other communication facilities. Till now 1,30,435 population have been screened through this TMC ROP. 4,175 people detected to have precancerous lesions. That means they might develop cancer in future but now they are on regular follow-up. 334 patients received surgery, 217 patients on chemotherapy and 287 on radiotherapy, thus increasing their life expectancy. Management of cancer is not just restricted to head, neck, breast and cervix, but blood cancer, CA ovary, CA lung and esophagus have started receiving treatment in Derwent. Other than this TMC ROP, 76 patients of head and neck cancer, 51 breast, 31 ovarian cancers and 72 GI malignancy cases are treated in the hospital. 27 CA esophagus, 37 NHL, 6 leukemia patients received treatment at Derwent. This was not possible earlier and these patients would fall a prey to poverty and ignorance. Both these factors are taken care of by organizing various other health and diagnostic camps, thereby increasing awareness. As it is said, need is the origin of research. The financial aspect was taken care by metronomic approach to chemotherapy. This low-dose chemo and its combination with anti-angiogenic drugs as well as tumor modulators are economical and was given to several patients free or at heavily subsidized prices. Dr. Banavali bought this approach to Derwan and it is a boon for these patients. It was the vision of Dr. Deen Shah to transfer the skill and technology to rural area. 
This vision was translated into reality by existence of the desired infrastructure at Walawalkar Hospital. And with this hospital is continuously upgrading its services. Not just upgradation of health services, but several people got employment at their native places because of the hospital and project. Their children got education in good schools run by the trust. Young girls got admission into nursing schools and other diplomas and technical education, making them capable of respectable work and independent. Now we will be starting critical course nursing, oncology nursing for young girls in this area. We will be happy to start radiotherapy courses under the guidance of BARC. Another new facility of radiotherapy is now added to the health services existing at Derwan and soon it will be able to deliver a complete treatment to patients of cancer of all ages. Whenever we refer a patient for radiation to TMH, people are disheartened, sad and scared. One of the patient's relative told us that can you not do everything here? If we leave our job and go to Mumbai, what we will eat? Do whatever you want to do here only. The compliance and the recovery is excellent once we treat the people of the region in their own place. Healthy atmosphere with no pollution and homemade food. We are thankful to Honorable Dr. Anil Kakodkar who has helped us provide the facility at Derwan. Director Dr. Rajan Badwe, Tata Memorial Center, has further added to the services that the project can deliver. Not just cancer but the other common elements like diabetes, Hypertension are also integrated in the project. Since January this year, we are recording blood pressures, blood sugars and BMI of the eligible population. This has helped several people to know that they have or most probably they are likely to have these disorders in future, thereby implementing prevention and early detection of complications. Since January 2009, 362, that is 10% of the population were found to have diabetes and 317, that is 8.7% of the people were found to have hypertension. This will certainly improve the quality of life and increase the life expectancy. Walawalkar Hospital works not only towards the mission of bridging inequalities in health services delivered to the people in rural and urban areas, but activities for empowerment in rural Kokan individual have been existing even before the hospital came into reality. TMC ROP is one aspect of trust activities, but Walawalkar Hospital runs several projects for the betterment of adolescent girls, mother, infant and child, as their health, habits and education are the indicators of nation's development. Pregnant ladies, 0 to 6 age group children, children going to Anganwadis are selected and given nutritious ladus, hematinics and calcium. They are monitored on a weekly basis with free ambulance service, free delivery and free neonatal stay if offered is required. 6,000 children and 1,600 ladies are getting benefited by this scheme. Impact of this project is now more than 80% of the ladies they deliver in the hospital instead of delivering at home. And average birth weight of a baby, which was 2 kgs previously, is now 2.5 kgs. The trust works at grassroots level to eradicate malnutrition, prevention of maternal mortality, and has a well-equipped labor room and neonatal ICU. All these are mandatory for a better generation next and trust takes all efforts to make these facilities available to the local population at a very low cost or free of cost. Empowerment of a woman generating awareness and educating them about their own physiology is one of the major activities of the trust. Through rural empowerment and community health project, they have learned the importance of self-employment. Various health education workshops have changed the way women used to, come, used to feel about their health. But now they have understood the disease is not physiological and they come walking in the OPDs to discuss their problems about health. The journey of past 12 years has been not challenging but had several obstacles to begin with. It would not be an exaggeration if I say that our hospital had a difficult infancy and childhood due to various reasons. One of them is its rural location, but continued to deliver persistently in spite of all odds. It took a long time to match the infrastructure and the human skills, as the skilled medical and paramedical professionals would not stay at Derwent for a long time. 
because of its geological location. But now, with the help of Tata Memorial Center, UK team visiting every year, visiting super speciality faculties and existing specialist doctors for 24 hours, the hospital is rapidly growing. A transparent organization with a genuine desire to deliver most modern health services at doorsteps of deprived, vision of a healthy nation and spiritual base cannot stay ignored for a long time. And therefore, it has attracted several people from different walks of life, different places and profession, all working towards transforming lives one at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patil. I now request other dignitaries to share a few thoughts with us. We are highly privileged to all, all dignitaries on the dais with us today. To introduce, I begin with Dr. S.S. Shastri, who is a professor and head of the department, Preventive Oncology, Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. He has given a definite direction to the concept of preventive oncology. The TMH model of preventive oncology is now considered to be the gold standard for all the regional cancer centers in India and the National Cancer Control Program. His service programs include WHO-supported tobacco cessation clinic, Tata Memorial Center Rural Outreach Program that covers Ratnagiri and Sindhudurga district, and Smoke Free Mumbai campaign. Sir has also received international awards like World Health Organization Director General Special Award for outstanding contribution to tobacco control among the youth in May 2008, International Achievements Award from the American Cancer Society for demonstrating outstanding leadership in the global fight against cancer in July 2006, and so on. We are very happy to have you, sir, amidst us today. I request you to please come here and speak a few words for us. Uh, namaskar to everyone here. I'll quickly, in the next five minutes, try to recap, provide you a recap of the Rural Model District Cancer Control Program that uh, we have in partnership with the BKL Walalkar Hospital here. In India, we have about 2.5 million, about 25 lakh cases of cancer at any point of time. With about 800,000, 8 lakh new cases being detected, recorded as detected every year. And we have about 5.5 5 lakhs, 550,000 cancer deaths every year in this country. We have a national cancer control program which was started in 1975-76. That was when the foundation was laid. And it has been revised and reviewed several times. And we are currently in the 11th five-year plan of the National Cancer Control Program. However, for several reasons, several barriers, it has not taken off the way it really should. It did a lot of good in the beginning by providing radiation oncology facilities all over the country and then upgradation of several facilities. But what was really required was awareness, and early detection and getting not just the governmental but also the non-governmental agencies into this whole cancer control program, which did not really happen. In 2002-2003, we were given the mandate of setting up a rural model district cancer control program uh, with funding from the Department of Atomic Energy under the 10th five-year plan. The very simple mandate that we set for ourselves was that it should be a backward rural area in India, not very far away from the Tata Memorial Hospital because we have to run the program. At the same time, we also have to have suitable local partners because we cannot run things uh, on a remote control basis from the Tata Memorial Hospital. That set me out, that set me thinking. And I did a lot of scouting around. I spent about three to four months looking at various parts of Maharashtra. I spent a couple of months uh, in this region of Konkan, that is Ratnagiri, Sindhudurg, Raigad, and my search for a suitable partner and a suitable area stopped at the gates of the BKL Walaulkar Hospital. Everything that we were looking forward from a partner was available here. We had a hospital which had the 
good infrastructure we had doctors here we had good people and good intention we didn't have to look any further so we started planning the program and in 2003 august 2003 the program was started it was inaugurated the program functions at three four levels it starts with systematic collection of data from village to village there are about 2400 plus villages in these two districts these two districts have about 2500 thousand 25 lakh population our job looking at the cancer scenario in the country the commonest cancers were head and neck cancers because of the tobacco using habit of this country and then among women breast and cervix cancer which are also fortunately for us preventable either by primary prevention methods or by secondary prevention that is early detection and treatment of early cancer cases this three cancers are the ones that we decided to create awareness about and to start the screening because there is good evidence that screening and early detection of these cancers provides good benefit for the people so systematic data collection village by village listing of all the eligible population three going and talking to the local powers that be which included the panchayat which included the school teachers whoever whoever in that village is a real opinion maker to make them understand first and then the rest of the village as to the importance of the program we found wonderful support in the volunteer network of the organization that is the vikel walalkar hospital and the uh, zoshi charitable trust the next was to carry out a actual awareness program out there and then followed by a screening camp we have about eight vehicles with about 70 plus staff members located here who go out on a regular basis doing all these activities and in the third weekend of every month we have a full team of doctors from the tata memorial hospital who come here so the cases which are referred from the community as screening positive come to the hospital they are diagnosed as true positives or not positives and those who are true positives are offered treatment at this hospital here and like it was said uh, very rightly by uh, dr patel and the kind of support that we received from uh, kakodkar saheb and dr dinshaw and the department the biggest flaw of this program was that it never became a comprehensive cancer care program because it lacked the radiation oncology facilities so while everything else was happening radiation oncology we still had to refer people either to the tata memorial hospital or to karad and 60% of people who were referred for treatment would drop out just because they had to go to other places and they could not support themselves for 6 weeks which is the time for which you have to stay in a place for radiation treatment uh, over these years we have been able to cover about 50% of the population in this region about 1200 plus villages have been covered with the surveys and like dr suwarna patel just said 130000 130000 people have been covered by the screening program we have been able to detect through the screening program about 671 cancer cases at various stages of the disease because this was the first time maybe when we come for the second time we would be able to detect them at earlier stages that ultimately is the objective of the program all these cases have been treated and like it was just said we have a tele medicine set up between this hospital and the hospital in mumbai the tata memorial hospital where all the cases are properly advised uh, the pre treatment is advised and then when the doctors come here and treat and go back then the post treatment advice is also given through tele medicine and it is a wonderful working model of what a comprehensive cancer care program should be in this country and i'm sure with the kind of support that we have received so far from uh, both the tata memorial hospital as well as the walalkar hospital from the department from the previous director and i look forward to the same kind of support from the new director uh, this should form a true model of cancer control for the country thank you thank you sir we also have amongst us dr sham kishor shrivastav who is a professor and hod radiation oncology tata memorial hospital mumbai 
Sir has obtained his MD and DNB in radiotherapy, followed by training from prominent cancer institutes in United Kingdom and the United States. His special interest lies in gynecological and gastrointestinal cancers and brachytherapy. Sir, we are extremely glad to have you here, and I request you to please speak a few words for us. Dr. Kakurkar, Dr. Badwe, all the dignitaries on the dais, Kaka Maharaj, and all my colleagues. We all know that today, if you look at the incidence of cancer, Dr. Shastri has uh, uh, already given the figures. Over 12 million cases are there, uh, which are existing. And currently, in developing countries like us, we are seeing over 50% of cases. And if you look at the WHO projection, by 2020 or beyond, we are going to see more than 20 million cases and more than three-fourths of the cases, more than 75% of cases will be seen in developing countries. So it is very obvious uh, in our country, especially when we look, that the number of cases which we are going to deal in future are going to be enormously large. If you see the status of uh, the treatment, we require the surgery, radiation, as well as the medical oncology. When we look at the radiation oncology, the equipment which are needed to deliver the treatment for these patients, whether it is a curative treatment or a palliative treatment, they are very expensive. And therefore it was not possible for all the centers or whosoever wants to develop a oncology centers to get these equipments very easily. And in that context, I feel that whole country will remain indebted to Dr. Kakurkar for his initiative in developing the indigenous equipments. And one of the feather in our head is the Bhavatron telecovalt machine, which is nearly half the cost which of the imported machines. So I'm sure these uh, many more centers will be able to afford these machines. And also his passion is there to develop the other equipments which are like the brachytherapy equipment, the simulator. And I'm very confident in, in coming years of time, very shortly, these machines will also be available for the centers in India in a short period of time. The Walla Welkel Hospital, when we look from the point of view of the treatment, if you look at the people here, when you come, you get a great satisfaction by seeing the commitment and dedication of the staff member, and which I have been seeing for past few years, that some of our colleagues in, from Tata Mel Hospital has regularly been visiting this hospital, and many times when I see the enthusiasm in our, our own colleagues, they want to go sometime earlier, one day earlier, and see the patients right when they reach over here in the evening. And this is one of the examples that when the colleagues came yesterday over here, they wanted to see the patient even in the night. And in the morning they saw all the patients and they are here ready. So I think when we look at the dedication, the commitment from the people from this hospital is enormous and phenomenal and therefore this, as Dr. Shastri has also mentioned, should be made as a model center where the other centers which are not able to afford these equipments, they should see that how well this center go and can give the treatment for the patients which is on a very, very uh, less less costly treatments and the effective as well as the cheaper treatment can be given. From Tata Mel Hospital, uh, we all are committed and all the support and the full support will be there from the, the, all the staff members and I am sure in coming years of time this will be one center where we can all say proudly that this is a model center and one should develop like this. Thank you very much. Dr. Balasubramanyam Ganesh, 
head of the department, medical statistics and epidemiology, is also with us today. And I'll request you, sir, to share your thoughts. Dr. Anil Kakorkar, Kaka Maharaj Dr. Rajan Marvi, Director Tata Mammal Center, Sri Vikas Walavalkar, Dr. Suvarna Patil, and all the dignitaries on the dais, invitees, and friends. As uh, Dr. Suvarna Patil has already mentioned about the ongoing cancer screening program in the hospital as well as in the community, I would not like to go into detail of that. My, my <coughs> job will be to talk about this a little bit of a cancer problem and how it can be best done through cancer registry here. Cancer is, is not a, such a major disease in terms of the rates in India and it is estimated that about uh, in a year there could be about uh, 10 lakh new cancer cases coming from, could be diagnosed from India. Now we have a national cancer registry program which has been functioning for the last 25 odd years and through these registries, I mean, they are in different parts of the country. There are some population-based cancer registries, and there are some hospital cancer registries. But these registries, all put together, they are hardly covering about 20% of the population of India. And also, there are not many rural registries, and most of the registries are in the urban setup. There are not really any rural registries in India, except now one we have with the Tata Mobile Centre at Barshi in Sholapur, which is in Maharashtra. Now, it's uh, very uh, interesting to know that there, uh, the rates are about, uh, about 100, 116 in males per 100,000. When you say 116, there should be 116 cancer cases per 100,000 in males and about 125 in females in the urban Mumbai. And exact contrast to that in Barshi, which is a rural-based, it's about 41 per 100,000 in males and about 55 in, among females. Now, overall in India, we know that cervix is the leading cancer of, among the females and adenic cancer among the males in most of the regions. Now, this is perhaps due to the, due to that fact that everybody, we know that it is due to the tobacco use and alcohol and other aspects. But in urban area, in many of the metropolitan cities, as of the data available today, the breast cancer is the leading cancer uh, in most of the registries under the National Cancer Registry Program. In Mumbai, the leading cancer is lung cancer among the males and breast cancer among the females. And likewise in Bashi, which is a contrast to the uh, rural, it's hypopharynx in males and cervix cancer among the females. Now since there are no cancer registries in this, and also we must recognize that although there are only one, uh, one rural cancer registry under the NCRP program, there is absolutely no cancer registry across the Konkan belt. Now, <clears throat> of course, we have this Mumbai, which is an extreme end, which is urban-based, but really not really anything to talk about the rural part. Now, here we have an opportunity here. Now, there is a tremendous scope to study this cancer incidence and mortality and the cancer pattern in the districts of Ratnagiri and Sindhudurg, and also to, due to the fact that we already have an ongoing cancer screening activities at the TMCROP of the Tata Memorial Center and the BK Walavalkar Hospital at Devon. Now this cancer registry which will be set up will evaluate the effectiveness of the screening program in these districts by methods of follow-up and by various methodologies here. We are sure that BKL Walavalkar Hospital will help us to establish one of the finest rural registries and maybe a role model in the rural registries besides Barshi in India. We hope that like Barshi, the rural cancer registry at Derwin will also give a lot of insight into the epidemiology and etiopathogenesis of cancer. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, may I request uh, now our chairman, uh, Dr. Sri Anil Kakodkar, to formally inaugurate the cancer registry. Thank you, Dr. Kakorkar. Now, um, 
I'll request Professor Dr. Rajan Badwe, Director of Tata Memorial Center, and to introduce him in a shorter way on his wish, I'll just say a world authority in the field of breast cancer, an excellent clinician, an excellent orator, and a master in the field of biostatistics. I'm going to request him to share his thoughts with us. Thank you very much. And it's a proud privilege to have been given this opportunity to collaborate with the Walavalkar Hospital here so that we could look at a model rural cancer care program. And as you have heard my team speaking about what has happened up till now, we have a multi-prong intervention which essentially looks at service as a major component service in the form of awareness, service in the form of screening for proven effective screening tools for oral, cervical and breast cancer, and effective management of symptomatic and those diagnosed within the screening in, that, in uh, the Walavalkar Hospital so that the person doesn't have to move from here to a, a distant place for treatment of his or her cancer. So that's about the service component. We would also like to help the education so that the local human resource evolves, is empowered to look after themselves. We uh, visit here at regular intervals to manage the symptomatic patients. Um, and I also see that many from Mumbai, Pune and overseas come here to do a similar kind of activity and that's what runs this place very effectively. As far as education goes, uh, one additional fact which I would like to pledge is residents who have had training, who, have, who are about to finish their training in a very high technology based environment at Tata Memorial Hospital would be posted here as a part of rotation so that with optimum, with their optimum care for them to cope with delivery of optimum care with minimum instrumentation. I must confess that technology is very addicting and that addicting technology should not cripple an individual when left in a society where this technology may not be available. So how best can we utilize our resources, our knowledge, to deliver the state-of-art care at a level where the care can be optimum with the least amount of use of technology is what will be offered as a part of education. Lastly, and before I touch upon the registry program, which I feel is the most important intervention that we could deliver here, and that is to gauge the magnitude of problem, to understand the qualitative nature of problem, and then plan further refurbishment of services, as well as looking at what kind of research might be done. That brings me to my last point as to what kind of research that can be now introduced in this situation. And at that end, I find that we are, as far as the survival is concerned, pretty low when as far as cancer is concerned. When you look at all cases diagnosed across India, this kind of survival may be slightly higher in cities and extremely high in the Western world. On the background of this, we should be able to devise interventions which would improve the outcome of patients who are symptomatic in this situation. At the same time, there are reasons to look at the strengths of this area that the incidence of cancer is quite low in this population and it may be worth looking at why is it low and whether in the pursuit of improving survival we should avoid reaching the kinds of incidences that the western world looks at. So 
something could be done from both ways. So my purpose of coming here is a two-way street. Learning as well as sharing whatever we have at this juncture. And I feel extremely privileged to be part of uh, this team. And I again thank Kaka Maharaj as well as the Walawalkal Trust for giving us this opportunity. And also thank... Um, um, Chairman uh, Dr. Anil Kakodkar to have given us that support so that we could share these this knowledge and the infrastructure at this place and I please continued support with an increment as far as understanding the basic problem of cancer and looking at the easy solutions in this population. Thank you very much. Now, as all of us are aware, BK Walawalkar Hospital is striving to give best medical care to the people of rural India at their doorstep and more importantly at the rate affordable to them. To facilitate this aim, a team of doctors and nurses from England has been coming to our hospital since year 2006. This team has been doing various surgeries such as thyroid, hernia, total hip replacement and total knee replacement, phaco surgery for cataract and so on. They started with 116 operations in 2006, 126 operations in 2007, and last year they did 242 operations in 2008. They come here at their own expenses and offer their medical services to us voluntarily without expecting anything in return. We salute their dedication and their charitable attitude, and we take this opportunity to felicitate the members of this overseas team. I request our Chief Guest, Honorable Dr. Anil Kakodkar, to felicitate our over friends. Dr. Oliver Belden, consultant anesthetist with special interest in the ultrasound group for regional anesthesia. Consultant General Surgeon who has interest in lower GI surgeries and laparoscopic surgeries. In this camp, she has performed more than 40 surgeries like hernioplasty, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, thyroidectomy, hemorrhoidectomy, and radical breast surgery. Dr. Lance Co, Interventional Radiologist. Morgan, Consultant Ophthalmic Surgeon, FRCS. is Dr. Morgan along with Dr. Manvikar has done more than 120 surgeries of phacoemulsification for the treatment of cataract in this camp. And Dr. Harsha Durga, FRCS and orthopedic surgeon. The 
This is Janine Mullen, Operation Theater Nurse. Shali Quantrill, Operation Theatre Nurse. <laughs> Mrs. Dorothy Keen, Consultant Radiographer. Mr. Devi Wills, Operation Theatre Technician. Ms. Eleanor Freeman, Operation Theatre Nurse. Carolyn Burvis, Intensive Trauma Unit Nurse. Mr. Peter Lindsley, Operation Theatre Nurse. Mr. Michael Brown, Operation Theatre Nurse. Last but not the least, the group leader under whose leadership these visits are arranged, Dr. Sanjay Deshpande, Consultant Anastasia. Pandey, may I now request you to share your thoughts on your team's behalf. Good afternoon, uh, respected Kaka Maharaj, uh, Dr. Anil Kakukar, Chairman of Atomic Energy, Dr. Rajan Badwe, uh, Director of the Tata Memorial Hospital, staff from the BKL W. Walawalkar Hospital, and, and my colleagues from the northeast of England. It is an honor and great pleasure to be back and working for 
Bikhel Valavalkar Hospital, Devan. As mentioned earlier by Dr. Suvarna Patil, the medical director of this hospital, we feel too and experience that we are a part of extended family. The preparation carried out for the success of this camp on either side has been phenomenal. I consider this as a stark example of team effort. We started this project in 2006 and I vividly remember the preparations we did for this particular project. And the aim mainly was to improve standards, provide education, and com comprehensive care to the community of Dirwan. The hospital staff and management have been proactive. They got a boost from our trip and have built on standards parallel to the support we have provided. I express sincerely gratitude to the Chief Executive of South Tyneside Foundation Trust, Mrs. Lorraine Lambert, for the relentless support from all the friends they have provided for this project. Also, I sincerely thank the staff of the neighboring hospitals in the northeast of England who contributed to this mission. I thank Oliver Weldon, who is our Chief of Anesthesia, Arun Chowdhury, Dave Wales, Caroline Purvis, for their outstanding contribution to anesthetics and intensive care they provided for this project. I thank Lance, Dorothy Keane, for their contribution to radiology services. And as we all know, both the specialities are the backbone of any hospital. I thank Beatrix, Janine, and Shelley, who have been coming for the last four years. I, I sincerely thank them for their contribution to the general surgical services. I thank Steve Morgan, who has been extremely instrumental along with Sri Manvikar, Elena Freeman, she's our ambassador for this project, for the contribution to ophthalmic services. I thank Peter Lindsley, Michael Brown, Harsha Duga, who kindly agreed to accompany us at short notice for their contribution to orthopedic services. I also, along with the ortho team, extend my sincere thanks to Smith and Nephew for their support. Finally, I thank Kaka Maharaj, Vikasra Walavalkar, Dr. Mrs. Patil, Dr. Nitaji Patil, Sunil Natkarni, and especially Nandan and Shashi for providing us all the support and also the staff which have been absolutely fantastic. Obviously, what is my final vision? Means obviously, I, when I came here, we wanted to provide, improve the standards and comprehensive care. But now, I finally, I, I comment that I endeavor to continue this mission, broaden the services, and continue to provide high standards to match what the requirements of the community of their one. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, yesterday, uh, good news reached us last night. There have been two new appointments at the Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. Our Dr. Shripad Banavli, oncohematologist, has been appointed as HOD Medical Oncology at Tata Memorial Hospital.
we would also like to felicitate Dr. Nirmala Zambhekar, who has been appointed as HOD Pathology, Tata Memorial Hospital. Kokan has always had minimal healthcare resources. People were ignorant about the modern medical facilities. BKL Walawalkar Hospital has started on its charitable path in the year 1996. Despite many hurdles, the hospital has continued its journey and to give the medical care to the underprivileged people of Konkan at their doorstep and more importantly at the cost affordable to them. The hospital runs various community-based programs. Many of the Indian and foreign dignitaries have appreciated the work done by the hospital. It is actually very difficult to express all the activities done by hospital here, but the efforts have been made to put the journey of Walawalkar Hospital in writing in the souvenir which is now going to be unveiled. We have tried to depict the hospital's activities of last 12, 12 years in the souvenir. I request Honorable Dr. Anil Kakodkar to unveil the souvenir. matter of a great pride for all of us to have Honorable Padma Vibhushan, Dr. Anil Kakodkar amongst us today. Dr. Anil Kakodkar is a distinguished nuclear scientist of India. He is presently the Chairman of Atomic Energy Commission of India as well as the Secretary to the Department of Atomic Energy, Government of India. To give his short introduction, after obtaining the degree in Mechanical Engineering, he joined the Reactor Division of the BARC in the year 1964 and also notched a master's degree in experimental stress analysis from University of Nottingham in the year 1969. He's also been a member of the care team of architects of India's peaceful nuclear tests that were conducted during the years 1974 and 1998. He also led the indigenous development of the pressurized heavy water reactor technology. His efforts in the rehabilitation of the two reactors at Kalpakkam and the first unit at Rawalbatta are noteworthy as they were about to close down at that time. He is known for being a strong advocate for India's self-reliance in field of nuclear technology by employing thorium as a fuel for nuclear energy. He was also a director of the Bhabha Atomic Research Center at Trombe during the period 1996 to 2000 before being appointed as a leader of India's nuclear program. And to mention, he was the youngest director of the BARC after Homi Bhabha himself. Sir is also one of those rare people who has been conferred with the highest three civilian awards, all Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, and recently Padma Vibhushan. <laughs> it is because of his help and guidance that the comprehensive cancer treatment is now fully available for the first time in Konkan. We are very happy to have him here with us, and I humbly request him to please address the audience. Respected Shri Kaka Maharaj, Shri Vikas Walavalkar, Dr. Suvarna Patil, Dr. Rajan Badwe, my colleagues from Tata Memorial Center on the dais, off the dais, distinguished colleagues from BKL Walavalkar Hospital, several dignitaries from India and abroad who are well-wishers, participants, contributors to the activities in this 
wonderful place friends ladies and gentlemen first of all let me use this occasion to compliment all of you for the wonderful work that has been going on here i was here some time back and uh, at that time i got the first direct glimpse of the activities that all of you are carrying out here i knew about this earlier right since the day the uh, the tmc outreach program began here but my visit here last time brought the intensity of the excellent work excellent programs that are being implemented here uh, in a very large measure and uh, today of course it's good to see that uh, the uh, comprehensive cancer care facilities that the walavalkar hospital has been trying to build is uh, in a measure i think things are never complete there is always go for additions but uh, in a measure reached the a, a dimension of totality in terms of comprehensive care through the augmentation of the radiation oncology related facilities i think i want to also reciprocate the feeling which dr badwe expressed as department of atomic energy i think we feel privileged that we have institutions like yours to work with the comprehensive approach to cancer or the problem of cancer in india is certainly one of the important mandates of the department of atomic energy uh, and in fact uh, it is the linkage between radiation and cancer both in terms of its causative dimension as well as in terms of its ability to cure that uh, the dae takes so much of interest in all aspects of work related to cancer and so tata memorial center uh, which uh, is the the main vehicle which is the main institution Uh, uh which has been carrying out this job is is our premier institution and uh, we are very happy in that tata memorial center uh, ably led by several distinguished people uh, till recently led by dr dinsha now the mantle is with uh, dr rajan badwe and the entire team of tata memorial center uh, <clears throat> i think they are wonderful people great professionals unlike many medical institutions in the country the programs of the center they i think they can be very justifiably proud that uh, they carry out uh, basic research this was the the mandate and the program of the cancer research institute earlier which is now a part of actrec the the clinical research which is also now a part of actrec and also a lot of uh, research that goes on in tata memorial hospital uh 
most important of course the service that the hospital provides uh, not just within its four walls but also through the extension and outreach programs such as the one that exists here the uh, the outreach program in terms of understanding the problem of cancer in the country in the related epidemiological work uh, we just now saw uh, the work of the registry uh, followed by the technological support because uh, as was mentioned the uh, the technologies for treatment of course in all areas but cancer is no exception are becoming more and more expensive and so how can we bring in uh, what i call low cost but uh, at the same time state of art uh, technological support for managing cancer in the country and uh, most importantly in so doing in running this outreach program covering uh, uh, covering uh, the surveys and understanding the problem of cancer in running the clinical trials in uh, reaching the the technologies and 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 all its dimensions of of the outreach program uh, now the tata memorial hospital does does this all i think an even more important dimension of uh, the institution which is the way it should be in all institutions is its human resource development program the the training opportunities uh, at all levels again uh, right from super specialty all the way down to paramedical staff and uh, it was nice to hear that uh, dr badwe is thinking of uh, getting uh, some of the residents some of the students towards uh, as uh, towards some part of their residency to also come and and carry out work here in in remote and, and rural areas because that certainly is a uh, is an important dimension in uh, in the learning process uh, for students even if they are uh, pursuing the super specialty program and what good what better place one can have than uh, than this hospital which has distinguished itself uh towards the service of the poor uh the uh, and obviously uh, the message of this service and the quality of service this institution is providing has uh, has reached far and wide as is uh, evidenced by the wonderful team of doctors from united kingdom who are here who have completed a camp and who have been doing so year after year uh, also i heard uh, that you have students coming from foreign countries and and come and spend time here so i think uh, to me this this linkage this framework uh, represents a holistic approach to to of course in the area of uh, medical service medical education and uh, we now as again has been mentioned that uh, we should look at this experience between uh, the tata memorial center and the walavalkar hospital as as a model uh, a good model we should certainly work to enrich it further but also work towards replicating this in in other parts 
of the country and uh, we have we have the backbone of uh, telemedicine link we have the the possibility of uh, specialists moving from uh, from Tata Memorial Hospital to such uh, uh, remote hospitals and in turn link up uh, with the field work. Uh, we have possibilities of uh, creating learning opportunities for students. Again, not just sitting in the un urban environments of, uh, of Mumbai, but also to, to learn the skills and the, and the practices which are more relevant. Uh, to areas uh, closer to rural societies and uh, so on one side as uh, Dr. Patil you mentioned you provide affordable service to poor at their doorsteps uh, at the same time you also create a framework where students can learn uh, both the, the higher aspects of uh, the medical practice, but also in the process, uh, I think, go that much closer to the society. Uh, surely, if the doctor goes to the, the patients at their doorsteps, uh, I think it, it does enrich, uh, uh, enrich them as students, as a part of their learning. I think it also perhaps enriches them as human beings. And uh, I consider that as, as a very important aspect of the, of the learning, learning process. And so I wish to really thank uh, Walawalkar Hospital for, uh, for this great opportunity, great experience, uh, which uh, I think we should seriously think in terms of, as I said, of course, further enriching it in whatever way possible, but also replicating it, translating it in, in other parts uh, of the country. And uh, if you can do that, then uh, I always felt, uh, as far as the Department of Atomic Energy is concerned, uh, our job is to take uh, research and development to the society and we do that in all areas and certainly we do that in the in the area of cancer and uh, but at the same time we are not health ministry so we cannot be doing that by multiplying hospitals uh, because uh, that I think for a country like India may not be a very sustainable model but if we team up with, uh, with the medical institutions uh, which exist and which would come up and uh, link up the way we have linked up here, uh, back it up with the technologies, both in terms of technologies for treatment, diagnosis, and also technologies for communication, uh, then I think you can bring in a very large uh, multiplier effect in terms of achieving the objectives of uh, the program that uh, we would like to pursue in Department of Atomic Energy. So I think the, uh, the, uh, uh, the ex experience that we have uh, uh, generated or obtained together has uh, has a much larger meaning uh, than just the service that uh, this experience has provided to the local people, which of course is important, very important uh, in its own right. But uh, as I said, uh, we can now think uh, to the larger dimension of to this problem and uh, and take the entire country in our fold progressively of course so i wish to compliment everyone involved with this everybody who is a part of this hospital everybody who is uh, from 
Tata Memorial Hospital and Tata Memorial Center who is involved in this exercise and, and of course all others from India and abroad who are so intimately and so selflessly contributing to, to these activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And now I request our trustee, Shri Vikas Walavalkar, to extend his vote of thanks. Honestly, this vote of thanks was not my subject. But then so many doctors and other important personalities have contributed to this project and to the radiation facility, radiotherapy facility that I thought it necessary to personally come here and thank them. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Honorable Dr. Anil Kapodkar for having spared time for today's function in spite of his extremely busy schedule. Last year, he had visited our hospital and we had then requested him to be present at the opening ceremony of the radiotherapy facility and he had given us assurance that he would be pleased to do so. And we are very happy today that he, he has reserved a full day for our hospital and for today's event. I am also thankful to him for providing assistance to secure grant for the radiotherapy facility and also for having kindly consented to felicitate the members of the overseas team today. Thank you, Doctor. I am also thankful to Dr. Din Shaw, who could not remain present for this event due to some personal commitments of us. But it was only because of her continuous and active support that the Rural Outreach Program got initiated and achieved success. Even the idea of starting radiotherapy facility was her idea, and she took active interest also in securing grant for this facility. Radiotherapy. <coughs> We will ever remain grateful to her for her contribution to this project and for her continuous appreciation of our work, what we are doing here, and also for providing encouragement to us at Walavalkar Hospital. I also express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Rajan Badwe, <coughs> Director, TMC, for remaining present for this event. Since he has taken over, as Director Tata Memorial Center, he has given all the assistance required for this project and I am sure we will continue to get support from him and this project will progress by leaps and bounds under his guidance. We are aware that without the technical support from Tata Memorial Center, it is extremely difficult to execute such a project in cancer treatment field. <coughs> in any project, Administrative controls and constraints always hinder the progress. However, with Dr. Ambumani at the helm of the affairs on administration side of Tata Memorial Center, we have never faced any problems so far. On the contrary, he always provides us new ideas for better efficacy of the project. We are extremely thankful to him for this. Out of the total grant received by us from the Government of India for this facility, an amount of almost 76 lakhs has been saved. The credit for this saving goes to Dr. Srivastava, who held number of meetings with Dr. Deshpande and Dr. Shripad Banauli and negotiated the terms with the suppliers in the best possible manner. We are extremely thankful to him and to Dr. Deshpande for their kind help and assistance to us. I am thankful to Dr. Surendra Shastri for his continuous support and guidance for this rural outreach program. It was he who selected our hospital as a base hospital for this project and recommended it to the director and since then he has been continuously helping us to execute this project along with Dr. Sharmila. I am thankful to both of them. I would be failing in my duty if I do not mention name of Dr. Shripad Banauli, just because he is also a part of our institute, institution. 
the soft hearted and soft spoken doctor always has to act as a link between our hospital and tata memorial center and i know for certain being part of these two institutions must be a tough job for him but he manages to remain calm and quiet he has been visiting walawalkar hospital once every month since 96 and has never missed a single visit except on two occasions when he was out of india we are really proud of our association with this extremely sincere and dedicated doctor we are also thankful to all those doctors and staff members of tata memorial center who visit our hospital every month and provide us necessary technical support for our rural outreach program and now for radiation facility radiotherapy facility i also express my gratitude to dr sanjay deshpande and his colleagues for having come here having offered their voluntary voluntary service at our hospital and also for having remained present at this event by postponing their morning departure it is really an honor to work with international figures from medical field like dr deshpande and his colleagues i hope they will be back next year with the same zeal and enthusiasm lastly i thank all of you for being present here for this event and providing us moral support thank you ग्रामीण भागात पण अत्याधुनिक सुविधा लोकांच्या जितक्या जवळ आपण पोचवू शकू ते पोचवण्याचं काम हे हॉस्पिटल अत्यंत उत्कृष्टपणे करत आहे गेली कित्येक वर्ष आणि काही वर्षात त्यांच्या या काम कामामध्ये कॅन्सरचा कार्यक्रम पण घेतलेला आहे कॅन्सर बद्दलची परिस्थिती आसपासच्या भागात काय आहे जिथे इथे कॅन्सर डिटेक्ट होईल तिथे त्यांना ट्रीटमेंट कशाप्रकारे सुरू करायची उपलब्ध करून द्यायची आणि त्याचप्रमाणे एकूण भारतात कॅन्सरचं जी परिस्थिती आहे त्याची कारणं त्याच्यावर उपाय याबद्दलचं संशोधन याच्यामध्ये पण इथल्या कार्यक्रमांचा फार मोठा वाटा आहे आणि म्हणूनच टाटा मेमोरियल सेंटर आणि वॉलवलकर हॉस्पिटल यांच्या सहकार्याने हा जो कार्यक्रम सुरू आहे याचं फार मोठं महत्व आहे असं मला वाटतं आणि आता इथे हे रेडिएशन ऑन्कॉलॉजीच्या ज्या सुविधा उपलब्ध झालेल्या आहेत त्यांनी या कार्यक्रमाला एक विशेष चालना मिळेल आनंद है